are one me in a couple of here and uh, we're gonna some of the I'm gonna ask him about some of the uh, questions uh, about people people keep asking me I can't remember the guy's name but you guys keep asking me about this guy from the Aryan Brotherhood who was around back in the day was it Brian somebody can't remember his name um Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I'm, I'll think of it later. Uh, and also, I want you guys to know that I wrote to Ghislaine Maxwell, you know, uh, the lady from, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the guy who co committed suicide. Uh, with all the little, you know, the, the, the pedophile dude. Uh, anyway, uh, she's doing, I guess, 15 or 25 years in the federal woman's prison in, in Tallahassee. Uh, I wrote her, I was, I was asking her if she wanted to come on the show, you know, she didn't even bother to respond. <laughs> you know what I mean? I heard that, uh, some, I heard, uh, some girls were trying to extort her and she told on them <laughs> what'd they expect man you know she, you know what the fuck anyway uh so anyway uh she's not really popular there let's put it that way and somebody said that um i don't like to repeat this shit but somebody said that she won't take a bath and that she smells bad i mean that's what the inmates are saying right I kind of figure that I don't, I don't see that being, a, I don't, I don't really see that being a, a true statement right there. Uh, reason I, re, I'm taking my shoe off. That's what I'm doing. I just come back from the gym. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see a woman of that caliber, you know, letting herself go, uh, you know, her, uh, her hygiene go like that. I just don't see that, man. You know. Uh, I don't, it doesn't make sense. It's not the, it's not, you know, her snitching on somebody who tried to uh, extort her. That I do believe, you know. But anyway, man, just came back. They closed the, uh, they closed Planet Fitness early for the holiday. <laughs> anyway, uh, so John should be calling up any second, and when he does, uh, I want to ask him about who the hell is the guy you guys want to find. Let me find out. Christ, all fucking mighty! All right, just had it. Got some stuff here. Mm -hmm. No, Christopher Gibson, brother of Gibson. Everybody wants to know about this guy. I think I remember him. You know, but I don't remember. I know for sure, hell, heavily, I think he was in control unit with us. I'm going to ask John about these guys in just one minute when he calls. Um, yesterday I was in New York. It was a nice day in New York. You know, uh, weather was decent. Um, yeah, I was in, uh, I was in East Harlem for a while, you know, and, uh, that's a pretty interesting neighborhood right there. You know what I mean? Very diverse, as they say. Um, I, you know, one of the guys I haven't checked on in a while is Larry Vaughn. I wonder if he's back in prison again, man. Uh, he's always coming back to prison, you know? He's been, uh, he had like 15 15, um, 
uh, what do you call it? Uh, parole violations. <laughs> He's been back 15 times. And when you come back, you do a year, year and a half. You know what I mean? Um, so... And he's got more more time in than me, which is ridiculous. Why would you do so much time? And I mean, you know, basically all technical violation is not reporting to the, you know, or giving dirty orange, uh, stuff like that. Those are technical violations. So he did that 15 times. You mean he didn't learn the first two or three times? Christ, man. Uh, it's amazing, amazing. Federal Bureau of Prisons. There you go. Federal Inmate Search. All right. Let's see if we can't find this idiot. That's eh, not the right one. Man, come on. Find by name, fool. Hmm. Inmate search. Man, this place is not right, man. <laughs> It's just not correct, if you know what I mean. Um, anyway, we're already three minutes into this damn thing, and I'm still waiting for John to call. And he will call, trust me, uh, in just a moment. Oh, uh, here it is. I'm going to do it right now. Larry. Vaughn. He's white. Hmm? He's male. And he's, I want to say 73 years old. Let me see. Oh, he's only 72. And he's been out. Yeah, he got released in the. In the 08 of 21. So, uh. I mean, he could be in a state institution or something like that, but, uh, or he, I'm always thinking the worst with this guy, right? Uh, he could be free, you know? I mean, he hasn't, you know, it's, it's probably the longest he's ever been out in his life. <laughs> anyway, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, so we're going to ask him about... Uh, uh, Christopher Gibson, and we're going to ask him about uh, uh, Hebley, uh, who, by the way, is a good friend of uh, Bobby Castile's. And Bobby talked about him. Well, uh, we haven't put the video up yet. We're still um, editing it. Uh, Paul is still doing that. and uh, But he does talk extensively about uh about Hevely, uh, who he was real good friends with ever since they were very young. And uh, I seem to remember a little bit about him, but not much. Myself, I'm talking about. Um, just a second here. Yes, sir. A bottle of water. You know what I mean? Makes my life so much better. Oh, there it is. individual at Arkansas Valley Correctional Facility. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, thank you for using Securus.
You may start the conversation now. Hey, what's up? Can you hear good? Hey, how you doing? How was your New York trip? Oh, man, it was great, dude. I put out a couple of shorts. Um, uh, uh, you probably never heard of this, but uh, there's a... Uh, what they call a, a, a convention center in New York City. Uh, and it's four blocks long and like in one block, like like four by one blocks, right? Uh, right. It's fucking huge, man. I, I took a picture, a uh, few pictures of it, put them online here. Uh, it costs $1.5 billion would it be to build uh it took them seven fucking years to build this thing you know uh yeah and it was like you know it was a lot of uh a lot of mob activity involved in it you know uh Always, of course, over yeah. all the unions, all the unions, all man. The unions run by the mobs, all the concrete and steel, the windows, too. The moon, this place has a gazillion yeah, windows absolutely. on it, too, man. Like this windows, <laughs> I think that might have been part yeah, of the big windows. That. Yeah, that might have been part of the big windows case that they had, uh, against, uh. Uh, the the mob in New York. That was one of the uh, probably one of the biggest parts of that Windows case. I don't know if you remember that. How many stories is it? Um, it's not like it's a couple of it depend. You know, different parts of the building are bigger than other parts, right? But it's no more than like two. Right. It's no more than like maybe two or three stories at the most. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what have you been up to, huh? What happened? I said, so what have you been up to? Well, I just, uh, yesterday I finished up Saturday and Sunday. Well, Saturday morning, about 3 in the morning, Sunday, about 3 in the morning. I was up on the type I finished up a writ. I'm doing a writ to the Center Court of Appeals to try to get permission to file a, a second 2255 on my underlying uh, conviction. And they're probably going to say no, but I, I got to exhaust it, right? So I'll go in the law library or model, get on the computer, pull up some of my old dates, like when I filed a direct appeal on this, one the exact date I filed a, a, uh, for a written search where when I, when I filed for uh, my post-conviction stuff, when it was denied, blah, 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 all that. I got to fill those things in. Other than that, it's ready to go. It's actually really good, but... Uh, they're probably going to say, no, you're way outside your time constraints and uh, that uh, you aren't basing it on new retroactive stuff from the Supreme Court. Actually, I kind of am, but I'm arguing uh, under Sullivan and all that uh, uh, defect in the trial mechanism which requires automatic reversal because they they put, put a... Uh, a uh, the burden of proof on an element of the crime, which is malice murder on malice, uh, on a lesser standard. It violated my, uh, the province of the jury, contaminated jury, gave bad supplemental jury instructions on murder, and all that stuff. So, uh, in the interest of justice, I'm saying they should reverse it or give me authorization to file a second 2255 in my trial court or reverse it and dismiss it as time served or, you know, uh, uh, just whatever, right? So, yeah. But I have to do that, and once that's done, if they say no, which wouldn't surprise me, because they, you know, they're stingy, right? They ain't trying to fucking give up no legal action, right? Right. Even though they fucked up, uh, then what that does is that makes 2255 unavailable, and then it shows that there was a trial defect, a constitutional violation, trial defect in, in the... Uh, trial mechanism itself and uh, that requires automatic reversal uh no uh, harmless error analysis under chapman it's automatic reversal so then i can argue that i'm in jail illegally and uh start pushing shit like that it'll open up other doors but i'm trying to do that 
to uh, get away from the parole board and all that. Why? I'm just trying to reverse it. Why? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, the parole board is going to let you go. And I mean, they got to let you go, right? Why do you want to get away from them? No. I mean. No, they don't. Yeah, you know, but. No, they don't. (laughs) I mean, when's the last time you had a write-up, bro? Well, but that's not it. The the thing is, is, uh, (laughs) they, uh. All they got to do is, is find that I still pose a threat to the community. And the only way they can do any of that is they got to look at my history. I seen them, I seen them a year ago when I had my, and last year when I had my statutory minimum hearing. And uh, he said, well, I'm not going to recommend a poll at this time. He says, but I'll recommend they reopen your case, which they have to uh, because uh, – my outdate now, my, my presumed satisfaction date is 2025 instead of 2055 because I gave 30 years back on that. Nice. But I got them to run a concurrent. So the thing is, is at that time last year, he says, we're going to do a more stringent review of your record at that time. So what they do is they look at the record and then based on the record in prison, you know, not only before prison, but in prison. Right. Then they say, well, based on that behavior, we say they extrapolated out that you still pose a threat or whatever. And they don't they don't give you a parole. They do that a lot. Um, Even though the law says you shall be released at 30 years, yeah, uh, which is interpreted as mandatory release. Now, because of the mandatory uh, non-discretionary uh, language in that statute, I got the federal cases on that. Believe me, I'm on top of this. Uh, that says uh, I have a constitutional or due process protection and, and expectation for release based on the mandatory language. Now, what I'm going to do when they're trying to say no, and I got to bring a habeas corpus on it, because I, I, that's what I think, Sean, is show that, well, the U.S. Attorney, the Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, through their U.S. Attorney's Office, themselves said at that time uh, a couple of years ago uh, that I've done enough, I've done well enough their, their statement is I've done well enough over the last 20 years or so that would not pre- uh, prohibit me being resentenced and having my sentences run concurrent because they were fighting that too even though under the Sentencing Reform Act they say if they max you out on one like they gave me life for murder Anything they give you after that, a thousand life sentences, they're supposed to run it concurrent. Hmm. But in my case, it was consecutive. So they fought me on it for over three years. Hmm. And finally, I put all the law in. If I would have went with my lawyer they gave me, I was dead. <clears throat> I was fucking dead in the water. Yeah, right. I had to do pro se shit, reopen the case, get a motion for reconsideration, all that. Then I did all the briefs, sent it to the U.S. attorney, sent it to my lawyer, then sent him a hard copy with a one one and a half page letter on top of it saying, listen, don't take it personal, but you don't know the law. And this is the law. And the U.S. attorney got mine. <laughs> it was a nine or ten page brief I put together. That's when they tapped out. You know, bro. Otherwise, I was dead. Yeah, there's a hey, I was fucking dead. My outdate would still be 2055 if I went with the lawyer they gave me. Right. There's a guy out here so, who does another channel. Said, there's a guy out here. Who, What's that? There's a guy who does a channel called Blood on the Razor Wire, who uh, wrote some. Uh, you know, he, he he helped get himself out. Well, I guess you know. I, uh, yeah, some, absolutely. And, That's what I'm doing. I'm waiting to get some money out of, out of California. I think I finally cornered him on the lawsuit out there. Listen to this, and, bro. Uh, listen to this. The guy is now out here. He's got his own station like me, but mo- where he makes most of his money is, you know, doing other people's law work. He is good enough. Yeah, yeah, consulting shit. That's what I'm going to do when I get yeah, out. I'm he's making a crazy. He's business. making a crazy living out here. Doing paralegal, it. paralegal investigations, media stuff, everything. Do that, man. That's where your money's at. I That's mean, where my money's at, and I'm going to help a bunch of motherfuckers get out too. And I teach healing, meditation, introspection, contemplation. I show them how to do lucid dreaming and heal themselves. I do it in here. This is where the fucking money's really at. So the thing is, is uh, but the bottom line is I got them fighting me. Right, right. 
when when I hey, when I went when I seen him two years ago or last year, he asked me. This is the first time he asked me this. It's a guy named Whitmer, Chris Whitmer, the examiner. He asked me. He says, "You still a national commissioner on the Aryan Brotherhood?" <laughs> really? I'm yes. Yeah. We're on a we're on a, 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 a like a Skype camera thing or something, right. you know, video thing. I told him no. He said, "You still a member of the Aryan Brotherhood?" I looked at him. I told him no. So he's trying to get me to admit I'm a member of a terrorist organization, right? But the fact that they're still asking me that tells you where their fucking minds are at. Yeah. So I, I expect a fight from I, and I always expect a fight. It's always a fight. It's always a battlefield. Always. Always. You know, I'm me. And because of me and my history and who I am and what I've been and everything else, it's always a fight. My whole life has been a battlefield. The whole life. I don't expect any. If they were just to give me a fucking pole, I'd be stunned. Yeah. Hey, so let me talk. I got to get a couple questions in here. You Do you know uh, uh, Chris Gibson? Yeah. Oh, can you, well, uh, commenters and uh, viewers want to know uh, what's he all about, man? T talk about him. What do you know about him? Chris is cool. Chris is a good guy. Last time I talked to him, when I, I was in the ADX room before they snatched me out of there in 2003 and sent me out to California and gave me an intern with shoe program in Pelican Bay. I had to battle my way out of there too. They forgot that I do law. Right. They fucked up. So, but Chris was hollering to me. I was uh, down, we were in the same cell block, but I was on C, C range. He was out in the outside wreck. And I was uh, on the inside wreck in lower C, but I could holler to him. And he was hollering about... Uh, prejudicial delay on the indictments and stuff like that, trying to get information on. So I was giving them information on that, right? Him and the guy out in the wreck, other wreck cage and inside uh, wreck, outside wreck for them, but it's single wreck. They were on single wreck there uh, with Steve Hicklin. Call him Vern. And Chris, we call him Garfield because he, he doesn't like it, but he looks like Garfield the cat. He looks like Garfield the cat. Yeah. So, uh -oh. But yeah, Chris. Chris was a good guy, stand-up guy. All how did he get? And, uh, how did he get in the play? Him and uh, Steve Hicklin were rap partners because they stabbed up Monster, a guy named Monster. Didn't kill him, but they stabbed him up. Where was this? And uh, uh, that was years ago. I guess Monster was fucking in the hat for something. I forget all the particulars about it, but anyhow, they got on him and stabbed him up. He's a big old boy. They stabbed the shit out of him, and. Uh, but yeah, so, but I haven't had contact with Christian, you know, yeah. fucking decades. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? How did he get in the brand, so, though? How did he get in the brand? Stabbing up Monster. Oh, that was Monster. It? Okay, yeah. Yeah, wow. He was in that band. Him and Steve. Hey, him and Steve Hicklin. What did they call Steve Hicklin? Just Steve? Call him Bird. Burn. <laughs> you remember that fucking commercial? The motherfucker gets his, his, his window slams down on his fingers. Yeah. And he, ah, he's like an old fucking country boy, all burned. That that, that guy, that's what they call it. Oh, so that's right. who they named him after, Burn. <laughs> uh, what about Heavily, man? Did you know Heavily? Yeah, Snail. Snail, wasn't he in the H? Wasn't he in H unit back in the day too? Back in uh in the seventies. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I remember him from. I there. know Snail real good. Snail, me and Snail were really good. We're buddies. Okay. Yeah, Snail's a good guy. I don't know where he's at. Last time I seen him, I left him down in the shoe in the ADX when I got out in '99. That's the last time I seen him. Right. That's like twenty five years ago. Well, he got he got but, indicted. Uh, he got indicted with uh, everybody in uh, 06, I, I think. Yeah, he did. He's dead. Oh, he did. Are you saying? No, he, he he also got indicted. That's yeah, true. I don't know if he's alive or not. I mean, you could uh, he always exercise. You could look him up on the locator. Yeah, I think I will. Right after we're doing this here, uh, I guess. Yeah, okay. he. Uh, 
How about how old would he be for sure? He's my age. I'll be 73. He's, he's my age, right in this age bracket here. Okay, I'll check it you out know? on that. Yeah, because they you don't have to be right on the money. You can be two two years either way, on the uh, on the on the uh, on the lookup. Yeah, his name's Edgar Hevley. Yeah, I was talking with Bobby about him, man. Him him and Bobby grew up together in uh, in what do you call it? Uh, fuck is it? Uh, where they're from? Where are they from? from? Fresno? Yeah, from Fresno. I'm getting fucking... Uh, yeah, a snail grew up... Snail from Fresno. Yeah. He said they grew up uh, together, he said, ever since they were kids. Um, Bobby said... Who that said that? Bobby Castile. Bobby Castile? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said they were like, uh, you know, school buddies and then... Uh, then uh, you yeah, know, CYA absolutely. buddies and, you know... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're, they're buds, man. Yeah, they, they've been through um, all of it, you know, since they were kids. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a pretty yeah, interesting that's how it guy. Is, right? I was talking to this other guy, man. He told me, uh, fucking, uh, most uh, Torres that was indicted with uh, Renegade in Sacramento, he just last year in uh, New Folsom, he got stabbed to death. I heard about and, that. Uh, yeah, he had a lot of money, and dude. Then, uh, an, he ran a he ran another, a lot of stuff. Uh, another Andy dude named Popeye. I guess he got stabbed. Got stabbed to death too. Yeah, yeah. We. Uh, I was uh, just hearing about all this stuff here recently. I was. A lot of that stuff's on YouTube, you know. Yeah. This guy Mosca apparently uh, he was making a lot of fucking money, dude, a lot, and uh, he, yeah. you know, from We're from his dope. yeah, from his cell, he was making a lot of money on the streets and in the of penitentiary, course. you know. Yeah, on, on cell phones where they fucked up, they ain't switching the cell phones up. Exactly, dude. They don't know, man. Fuck. Uh, oh, they know. They know. They're just getting sloppy. You're, even if you're using burner phones, they're yeah. getting sloppy. You always, if you're going to be doing that shit, you always got to change out your phones. You have to assume at some point somebody either rolled over their telling or something got busted or they got up on the phone or whatever. Now they're going to start fucking up. I would say, yeah. Phone. I'd say maybe use a burner for a month and get rid of it, you know. Maybe a month. Yeah, you got to get And as plentiful as they are in the California prison system, you should have a whole bunch of them on the side already. If that's what yeah, you're going yeah. to be doing, you have to ensure your your, your security. Yeah. You got to protect yourself. That's how they got on Renegade and all them. They busted a load of crank from going from California into the, into Missouri. And when they it was a, a shipment, and when it got busted, they fucking uh, they found a phone, and the phone had the calls and numbers going right back to the penitentiary. Right back to fucking Renegade and uh, Pat and all these other guys, the phones they're using. So they immediately start bugging them. And now they're listening to them talk on the phones from prison to prison and everything else about whacking motherfuckers and dope moves and everything else. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's exactly how they got indicted. That's, that's how they right. get busted. Yeah, it's crazy, man. You have one minute left. So... Yeah, well... So, so that, you know, I mean, hey, man, it is what it is, right? Then I heard Popeye, uh, Peni Popeye uh, dropped out. Yeah, he's a witness down. protection program, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so, no, you know, so... Nobody knows where he's at, so he's... So, in, how's the Peg Lake Pirates doing? He all right? Yeah, we're going to do... I'm going to call him this week, man. We're going to set up the... Uh, we're going to set up... Uh, all right, well, tell him I said hello. All right, They're I'll see you. Cut us off here. I'll see you tomorrow, man. You have a good one. I'll holler at you tomorrow. All right, bye. All right, later. All right. The caller. So there you have it, guys. Um, yeah, yeah. See, I knew I knew heavily, but I don't remember if I've ever uh, run into the other guy. Uh, 
Gibson. I don't remember, but I think he might have been in the uh, in the control unit with us too. I think. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Enjoy, and uh, I will be back again tomorrow with some other wonderful shit. <laughs>